As you probably know by now, the worship team has designated these four Sundays of September as the season of creation. And the season of creation has these four themes in it. Uh, planet Earth, humanity, which is today. Next week, we'll look at sky. And the last week of September, we'll take a look at mountain. Those four themes. And there are scripture texts that go along, uh, special scripture texts that go along with each of these themes that help us think more about the themes and how these themes relate to uh, our own living in this day and time. The Seasons of Creation was uh, developed in 2000 by the Uniting Church in uh, Australia, and then it has spread throughout the European church, and probably not many churches in the United States are celebrating this series because this comes out of the Sunday School curriculum we use, uh, which is uh, ecumenical and uh, global. There is, though, whether we are celebrating this series or not, there is a growing awareness and concern in the church about how we have been treating planet Earth. Back in May, we celebrated Earth Stewardship Sunday and invited Dr. Benjamin both. Do you remember Benjamin coming to talk to us? Benjamin is an assistant professor at UNL in English, and also is director of Monarch Gardens uh, here in Lincoln. <coughs> Benjamin talked to us about the relationship that we humans have with the rest of creation, and when one component of creation becomes in danger, uh, in this case the monarch butterfly, uh, as Benjamin was, was showing us some slides and talking to us about, then the whole ecosystem and planet is affected. Our population in the United States is growing by 8,640 people per year. That's just in the United States. Two million additional acres of land each year, which is the size of the Yellowstone National Park, is developed for urban sprawl, larger homes, paved roads, shopping centers, cities. We have turned 54% of our land into cities and suburbs and 41% of our land into corporate agriculture. 95%. We have made 95% of our land in this country unnatural. From 1999 to 2010, there has been an 81% decline of monarch egg laying due to in part 167 million acres of our land uh, as being lost or of our habitat being lost. To urban development. If we don't amend our ways by the year 2100, the Great Plains is on track to lose 77% of its grassland. So the truth is simple, very simple. We must learn how to share our living, our working, and our agricultural spaces with biodiversity, meaning everything else in God's creation. The second Sunday of this series is called Humanity Sunday. It's what we celebrate today. And the important question that is a challenge to us and we, we must address is this. How should we relate to our birth home? A very simple question. How should we relate to our birth home? The Genesis passage that Sandy read to you reflects the language of being fruitful and multiplying 
to subdue the earth and to have dominion over all living things. It suggests that humans are made in the image and likeness of God. And then a little earlier we heard a passage from the Gospel of Mark where Jesus reminds us that we must bear a little humility when Jesus says, whoever wants to be first among you will be the slave of all. And the passage that you first heard from Philippians calls people to consider their God-given responsibility to care for creation and the potential of creation. Paul says in Philippians 2, 4, let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. That's great. <laughs> this morning on this Humanity Sunday, let us consider what our relationship is to our earth home. Not just with our human neighbors, but the whole neighborhood. Meaning the oceans and the rivers and the lakes and the streams and all that call home within them. Let us consider the plants and the flowers and the trees, the birds of the air and all of the living creatures that live upon the land, the soil and the grass and the rocks at our feet, the air around us and the air within us that our lungs live upon. We all belong to each other. We all belong to each other. We human beings are at present the most complex developed creatures on earth, at least that we think we are, and possibly that's what the author of the Genesis, uh, Genesis passage was trying to say to us. We know now that we are embedded in, that we are products of the earth and its evolution. We share a common origin with everything else that has been created. The same biochemical elements are in bacteria, are in us. And yet, we know we are special. As is everything else. How do we know we're special? What is our specialness? Our specialness is self-consciousness. We know that we know. The author of the Genesis text gives human beings a, a spiritual mandate or command. In verse 26, the author says, We who are made in the image of God at the beginning of all things have dominion over all creation. I want to say that this text has been used and abused by the church, by religious thinkers, by people who interpret scripture quite literally, by TV preachers and anyone else to suggest that the earth is somehow evil or material and that it is the enemy of human beings. That is the dangerous way to interpret this text. Increasingly, we have exercised that dominion and now the earth is in a fight for its life. And it's fighting for its own survival through global warming, a rise in ocean levels, drought and wildfires, the melting of the polar ice caps and glaciers, the depletion of plankton in our oceans that feeds all sea life, ocean depletion, flooding, and terrible storms. Our planet is literally fighting for its survival. The earth isn't our enemy. The earth isn't our enemy. But I'm sure that for the rest of the species on planet earth, 
we are theirs. We must read this text. And we must read all of the Bible. That's why we have Sunday schools and learning groups and activities. We must read Scripture responsibly. We must read this text responsibly. The role of the human made in God's eyes was to mirror God to the world and to care as God cares. That's what the text means when it says to have dominion over. The Hebrew word that gets translated as dominion doesn't mean that we exploit creation or can manipulate creation to our own ends and purposes. Rather, dominion is where we get the, the Greek term domus, which is translated household. Dominion means stewardship of this household we call planet Earth. It means to love it and to care for it as God loves and cares for it and everything. God has dominion over us simply means that God loves and cares for us and God desires for us to be the best that we can be so we can call, that we can care for planet Earth and make it the best that it can be. Our faith as followers of Jesus Christ, will challenge our behaviors, our lifestyles, our commitments, our habits, and the choices we make. Our faith, as disciples of Jesus Christ, holds us to a standard of loving our neighbors as much as we do ourselves, and our neighbors don't just mean the people on the same block, our neighbors are all of the living species on this planet. Our faith, over time, should cause some change to happen within us. It should cause some transformation to happen within us, a transforming mind and a transforming heart, so that we are less about finding ways to support the life that we want and more about creating a life that sustains what this planet and our neighbors need. As I read the Bible, I think Jesus modeled for us a life about making some serious choices. A life that meant making some life-changing choices some sacrificial choices that call us to love our neighbor and planet Earth as much as we love ourselves. So in this season of creation, may this be a spiritual time as members of the human family that we can partner with God and our neighbors, not just human neighbors, but the whole neighborhood to work for a just and sustainable planet for those who will come after.